So Trudeau and his liberals in their infinite wisdom have banned 1500 guns, mostly AR-15s and some coffee for some reason, which may very well have been illegal, and every single person on the left has been cheering for an entire week. They never held a gun, mind you, but they are perfectly happy to pretend buying an AR-15 will instantly turn the average Joe into a John Wick. To some it might come as a surprise, but yes, Canada does have AR-15s and even some toys that the Yankees don't have access to. So how does the Canadian system work? Well, pretty much like in Europe, the current situation is a result of the various governments piling regulations ad infinitum to limit what the population has access to. I'm not going to bore you with every single piece of legislation and date, but to give context, it's important to note that it all started in 1885 when a region called the Northern Territories became a bit rebellious. In an attempt to cut the flow of weapons going to this region, the central government decided to institute a mandatory license system just for this territory, and for the next 135 years more or less, it has been an ever-increasing amount of regulation until today. You might be wondering why I'm telling you this, but I think it's important to understand this particular point as, like many other countries, in Canada, the gun control policies are mostly put in place in order to control the population rather than to increase safety of any kind. This is a pretty big and hypocritical reversion of the democratic principle of government being for the people, by the people. In modern Canada, if I remember correctly, firearms made after 1892, so anything prior to smokeless powder is pretty much not a firearm in the frozen waste, are separated in three categories, non-restricted, restricted and prohibited. These categories were put in 1969 for seemingly no particular reason as far as I can find. And by this I mean I couldn't find any particular massacre or particular event that would actually be used to politically justify it. So to acquire any of these or the ammunition, you will be required to get a license for the corresponding category. These licenses require passing written exams, explaining operation, laws, handling, that sort of things. Overall, very easy exams costing around $120 for both of them. If you want to shoot restricted and you live in Quebec, however, you will also need to pass a Law 9 exam. This written exam will cost you about 40 bucks and it's both written and hands-on. You have to pass this particular exam if you want to be a member of a club, which is also the only place where you are allowed to shoot your restricted firearms. Something that will obviously be adding three to 400 beaver bucks to your annual costs. What does this extra loss says, you ask? Just a little bill that says that you are not allowed to take your restricted guns in public transportation, so it's fuck you poor people in your yeet cannons, bars, tribunals, bunch of public places and um, places of worship. I think the Mosque of Quebec should have probably plastered this law everywhere on its walls. Back to the guns. So once you have passed your exams and you have submitted your information for a background check, about 28 days later you will be receiving your Possession and Acquisition License or PAL. Now that you got your license, which means the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, RCMP for short, something put together to pacify the country will check your clean every single day until you lose said license. Because of course, there is a time limit. And if you were to not renew your club membership on time, you will also lose your restricted license, which means you will have to repass both the exam for the restricted exam and the law 9 all over again. And of course pay the costs. With your new license, once you are done smelling the fresh new plastic, you can now walk happily into any gun store and buy all the F-14s with infinite assault caliber clips you want. So say you want a shotgun, because you like hunting ducks or shooting clay, you can. You want a 1022? You can. You want an RDB? You can. No 4473 to fill out. Just show your license and you go out the door with your new toy. You want an AR-15? Well, I'm afraid this is just a bit too dangerous for you. You have proven to be a spotless individual so far, but who knows what you will do if you are handed the one rifle. <laughs> huh, weird weather. Anyway. That's one difference between the non-restricted and the restricted. A non-restricted you can buy on the spot, live with it and go shoot pretty much anywhere it's not forbidden. A restricted, however, you will pay for and you won't live with. You will have to wait for a transfer to be completed, 
something that should really be instantaneous, but the RCMP probably has some pencil pushers that are just paid to update the registry. Because yes, the restricted firearms are registered to your name. After waiting for at the very least a couple of weeks, you will be receiving in your mail a certificate showing you that the transfer has been completed, you will finally be able to take your rifle to an approved shooting range. For which each province has its own rules and Quebec has the most retarded of them all. Lucky me. How does a gun get a category, you ask? Well, the categories have a specific length requirement, both overall and barrel. A little bit like the SBRs in the USA and fire mode. This means that every single gun with a barrel less than 470mm, 18.5 inches give or take, will be restricted, and that includes every single handgun on the market. That's why if you look at the RDB for example, the Canadian version has a slightly longer 18.6 inch barrel. But of course, our wise politician decided to leave the provision allowing to recategorize firearms by name. So even if we know full well an AR-15 is not any more dangerous than any other 5.56, it is restricted by design, just like the AR-10 for example. This also gives us the weird situation in which a rifle based on a design prior to the AR-10, for example the AR-102 which is a prototype to the AR-10, this particular one is not restricted. For example, the rifle that I hunt with, a Troy 102, is quite literally a rifle made specifically for the Canadian market by Troy Industries that is based on the AR-102 platform. As to how the list was populated at first, I don't know if I am getting trolled, so take it with a grain of salt, but multiple people at the range have told me the RCMP essentially assembled a focus group, put them in the front of a picture book, and had them commenting. Probably the same people who took pictures of the USP back then. Nowadays, the RCMP is supposed to have a lab to test every new gun before it's put on the market, a process that is taking years every single time. You might argue that every idiot is capable of reading a spec sheet and using a ruler, but what you do not understand is that it's way, way more important to rid the streets of dangerous stormtroopers. Finally, we get to the prohibited firearms, which are, well, prohibited, so nobody but the military can get their hands on them. It will be all the firearms with fully automatic fire mode, or handgun with a barrel of less than 100mm in length, plus 25 and 32 ACP calibers. This is why the P10C and a bunch of other pistols are only available in a tactical version in Canada, with a threaded barrel, as otherwise it would be just too short. You also have all rifles that are less than 660 mm long with a barrel less than 470 mm, which means you really only have a handful of bullpup rifles and some PCCs that are prohibited in terms of length in Canada. However, just like the restricted, we have a few designs that are prohibited by law. For example, the Kalashnikov design is prohibited by law in Canada except for the one made by the manufacturer Valmet. You would think that being the only manufacturer available, there would be Valmet AKs everywhere in Canada, but for some reason, no, they are pretty damn rare. Do not ask me why, but the RCMP seems to also have a hate boner for the SIG 550 series. They tried to ban it in 2014, and they again did it today in the Ordering Council of Trudeau. Another design that's prohibited by law is the G3 and all of its little brothers, so there's no SP5 in Canada, sadly. For this one, I am not 100% sure, but I believe the RCMP justification is that, technically, the base stamping of the G3 series and its derivatives are the same as the military ones. Then after the stampings have been folded, a piece of metal is welded inside of the receiver to prevent an automatic trigger group to be installed inside of the gun which, in terms of Canadian law, would constitute a modified automatic, which immediately puts it in the prohibited category, even though removing that piece of metal would most likely be destroying the receiver, and you would still be needing a fully automatic trigger group. I don't remember if it is on InRange TV or Forgotten Weapon, but Ian and Carl have made a pretty good video on the assembly or fabrication of the Setme rifle, which is essentially a precursor of the G3 for the Spanish. Of course, there are also limitations on magazine size, and this one is even less consistent. So, in theory, you have your rifle that are limited to 5 rounds, which is really just a regular magazine with a pin inside them. 
Whenever I go shoot in the US, I always take a Dremel inside of my luggage and as soon as I get to the hotel, that pin goes out and I put it back in just before returning to Canada. For pistols, we are supposed to be limited to 10 rounds, but because of the NFA, and that's the one time I will be thanking the NFA, we have a bunch of manufacturers that are making ARs in pistol forms. And because the RCMP is basing itself on the original rifle or pistol that the magazines are made for, it means that we have magazines of 10 rounds that are compatible with AR-15 and are legal to use as such. Annular percussion magazines are in a bit of a grey area. In theory, these magazines should not have any limits. Problem is, the 1022 rifle also exists in a pistol version. As some of you may know, Ruger is making a 25 round magazine. Problem is, RCMP has decided that since the magazine is compatible with the pistol version of the 1022, it should always be limited to 10 rounds. So it means that overnight, a magazine that has been used in the millions by Canadians was made into a prohibited device and Canadians had to either modify them or to surrender them to the RCMP. But you know, at least we have rifles from the Kunflu country, I guess. Thank you for watching! I hope I gave you a halfway decent overview of the Canadian gun laws and the situation the Canucks have been facing. If you enjoy, please like, subscribe, hit that bell, and if you wish to hear more on the subject, I will keep covering it as it develops. If you wish to help improve firearms rights in Canada, there are links in the description box for the Canadian Coalition for Firearms Rights, as well as an official parliament petition if you are a Canadian resident. Salut bonsoir!